the biggest like difference you think you made it or you like noticed from when you started performing until now? There was no effort in my shows in the first five years. I didn't have to put in any effort. Audience would shout louder than the music because my fan base is so beautiful. Like, the only reason my, my shows are working, the only reason I'm successful, it's because of my fans. I have such a loyal fan base. And it's weird how I've never lied about the fact that I don't know how to sing. That I use autotune. Like most of the people, I was the one who introduced autotune. Hey, there's something called autotune you could use, okay? The first year of my shows, I only had one released song. And my shows would be 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I'd literally play the same song five times. And like people would be fine with it. Yeah, that's so, it. Yeah, because like when you're in a small club, there are only 200 people, you could engage with most of them. But when you're in a concert and you have 5,000 people, 10,000 people, I can't do that. When I started performing as headliner, like I was coming in the end and there were other people performing before me, I felt that they came for me. Like I owe them a performance. That's when I took up like music. I started learning music, I started to learn how to sing. This is probably the first time I'm saying this in a podcast. That's, sick. That's when I started learning. And I didn't start learning to start to be able to sing live. I started learning how to sing, so I don't need to use so much autotune in my songs. Now when I perform, like there's a structure to my performance. There are certain songs that we perform. In fact, some of the gigs, we we send the, uh, the playlist to the promoters before that, hey, this is what the sequence is going to be like. Could you make sure you send us your lighting people, your FX people? So there's like a proper set that at which song, which moment, the confettis are gonna go. So there's a lot of effort that goes into my shows now. And it's also because I realized that this is a business now. This isn't that I got viral, then I did X amount of shows, and then one day this is gonna die off. When this didn't die off, but the prices went up, the production value went up, the shows went up, that's when I realized this is serious. If somebody's investing X amount of money and five, 10,000 people are gonna rock up, it's all on me. I can't rock up and be looking back and go, hey, which song do we play? So it's my job, it's my responsibility. So we changed our DJ. My, my DJ now is actually my music producer. So our sound engineer and all. So like, this is like serious well, Everything shit. changed completely, right? Yeah, they saw me on that question. Do you know what I mean? Because like, yeah. I wasn't trained. So I wouldn't tell those people that, hey, I don't know. Shit. So I'd go learn. <laughs> then I'd come and like, oh, yeah, so let's do that. They, but I enjoy it now. Because now one of my sick career, one of my new things on the other. Like now I could, you know, dub a song all by myself. Like I don't need anyone to sort of, you know, maybe recording the lay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need 17 takes for the song anymore. I dub my songs in like five, 10, 15 minutes. Like hopefully by the end of next year, I'll be performing a few live songs as well. So that transition is beautiful. Because I never thought I had it in me. I always say that, you know, hard work beats talent. No, I remember uh, one time when we, uh, when we spoke last, uh, you were always talking about evolving, like onto the next thing and onto the next thing. Aside from even going musician to actor, but going from you know musician to e even better musician, you're gonna be singing at your own shows now. Yeah. yeah. Did you already start? Yes, yeah, some of the songs we do. So like Am Jai Monday, like uh, we have very little like music at the back. Like Am Jai Monday is mostly. Live. How long did it take you from like when you started taking singing lessons and all that to now so, performing? So, and so what I started doing was I don't try and sing out of my limitations. So I, because now I choose my own songs, I only do songs that are, you know, which I could sing naturally. The songs or the lyrics that I feel comfortable with. like. It's a very precise attempt to make a commercial song. The old jinna to see the whole that attempt thought comes naturally to you. Let's say my Tornal Chada was a very simple. Uh, but then, you know, some of the songs, you know, you, you're trying to sing when you don't know how to sing. So all, the auto tune is going to be very obvious on it. So now the songs that I do, let's say Ruby on Drill, Check Car, like they're within my vocal capacity. They, I, I do, I do learn, 
only because I want to be able to perform that song well within my vocal range. Because you're pretty much a rapper. Yeah. So you, you don't need to be someone who's going to be vocally gifted to the point where you're going to be doing hit on for like 30 seconds 100%. in a song, yeah. right? And I mean, like, like, when I discovered hip hop, when I discovered rap, that's when, because that whole transition happened through Rubicon Drill, Chekkar, and like all these songs. They were all rap songs. You know, I wasn't singing in those songs. It just all worked out well, because musically, the transition was happening towards hip hop sounds anyways. Like musically, people are shifting towards international sounds. And then vocally, I was shifting towards hip hop. So sort of hip hop, the rap scene in India, the obesity was da ho rea. They, that's where I felt more comfortable as well, because rap is basically, you know, it's poetry, it's, it's storytelling. The jo meri individual journey rahi hai, jo meri individual conversation hai, lok ka naal. Oh, it's about my journey, it's, it's, it's about my struggles. So it comes naturally to me. I hope you guys enjoyed that teaser of part one of Parmish Burma here on House Talks Podcast. If you enjoyed it, guys, share it with a friend, but more importantly, hit that subscribe button because there's a lot more to this conversation and I know you're not going to want to miss out. We'll see you this Friday for the full episode of part one.